Hi folks, I'm Stephen Cronin. Uh, welcome to another watercolour demonstration. Today I've got a simple little big wide open landscape for you. Really had the opportunity today to go really big with the sky. So let me show you the colours I've used for this one. So I've used ultramarine, lemon yellow, Payne's grey, lizard and crimson, raw sienna, burnt umber and light red. Brushes, got a large one round today quarter inch flat brush and then a couple of riggers, a zero and a number three. So I just wanted to give you a quick view of my uh, Patreon page. If you ever do get the chance to go over patreon.com slash Stephen Cronin. There's loads on there. It's where I post all my um, articles and reference photos and there's about 250 videos on here exclusive to this Patreon page for the patrons. So, that's on there, patreon.com slash Stephen Crane. You'll see the link in the description. Now, I've got quite a low horizon line with this one. And what I like about low horizon lines is it really gives you the opportunity to go balmy in the sky. So I'm just gonna start off with raw sienna, a bit of red, lizard and crimson. Let's see what that looks like. Bit of blue in there as well. A bit of yellow over that side. More crimson and blue. Bit of Payne's grey in there as well into that mix. To a lighter colour, so I'm going to clean the brush back to a bit of raw sienna. In fact, I'm going to clean the brush and just make it a little bit lighter by the horizon. I just want to put a few ominous looking clouds in there. something something like that I think yeah that's sky colour in the ground also a bit of white clay a little bit of texture up there I'm going to try and hold all that in position by giving it a quick dry. against the board there are there's a, there's a few hairs that have come off the brush I don't even worry about them anymore I just consider them as part of the painting so next we want got some distant land and that's all sort of sort of over there something like that Green in there, bit of raw sienna, ultramarine's about it. And then I'm going to take my little flat brush and I'm going to take a bit of dark, mix all the darks together. And I want something a 
something like the sort of silhouetted rooftops and things. Silhouette section. They so got dark plants and trees and things growing. I could use the height brush if I wanted to, and this. Um, I'm just experimenting with this brush really, just to see what it, what sort of effects I can get with it. Something that's a little bit bigger. They're just sort of silhouetted buildings. I mean, a few more marks down there. And then if I grab me little scraper, we got like a lighter, lighter building there. It's just in front of that one. A little one there, I think. Let's just clean that brush. I'm just going to switch back to the hike. Few lights, lighter colours around here. We're going in first. I just want to pop a little path in. I'm going to take a bit of, bit of red and a bit of blue, and it's going to sort of. Just like something like that. Brush that up to the edge of the path. I just want to get this flat against the easel. Just want to redefine. I might have just I'll probably just wet that a bit too much when I when I did this. Just slightly over wetted it. I just want to get a little bit better. Definition on there. Push that up to those darks. I'm going to do these trees again actually, I don't have made a bit of a mess of them. These are just a few random fence posts and whatnot, just scraped in. 
I'll just do some really dark green. A bit of ultramarine, lemon yellow, Payne's grey. And I'm just going to use the corner of the brush. They look a little bit better. A little bit more like trees and things growing there. Dark scattered about. Switch the rigor brush. Just want a dark mix, bit of red, bit of blue. The Payne's grey, so general dark mix. I'm just gonna just wanna pop a few just random lines in. Not, well, not random, but just little bits of detail. That's just following the, the path there. Little fence posts. Well, do I'll cast shadows off that, and it'll, it'll help with the enhance the light as well. Um, I mean, what's always nice is a few little telegraph poles and things. Um, you know, one there. Um, I've got one up there. Something like that, and then if we just pop. Little wires, just very faint. Just a little detail. figures one a little bit further on and then just need to make sure this is nice and flat and I'll do I'll give it a quick dry and just brush a brush a big foreground shadow in it. Take a bit of brown, bit of red, bit of blue. Reasonable amount of water because you want to be able to see because otherwise the paint will be too thick and you'll be able to see what's underneath. After make that mistake, just test it on the side if you're not sure. So right, that looks all right. So I'm just going to cast a big shadow across there like that. Something like that. Dry.
that shadow mixed with this little size zero rigger. And I'm just going to pull little shadows off each of these. See it in there. Can hardly see this, making it a little bit darker. I'm going to stick a little bird, bird up there I think, and I'm going to finish it off. I'm just going to stick my name down here and call this one done. So let's stick a mount on that and see what it looks like. So that finished painting, all mounted up. So if we Go have a close look at it. So I started off with this nice big sky. I, I, I think my favourite type of painting is when you can do a great big massive sky and just go wild with the colours. So on the right hand side, I, I went round quite a lot of the colour palette, colour, quite a nice sort of shade of red there with a bit of a light red lizard crimson, there's a bit of raw sienna and then a bit of ultramarine, Payne's grey, especially when I've done the shadows there. And then we'll just lighten the sky a little bit at the horizon line, just so that distant land would show up nicely. Then got these big, big trees just in front of you. You can see where I've just scraped in a few random details and, and fence posts and all that sort of stuff. Put the the silhouetted buildings in nice and loose. Wet it first, just to give, make it even loose. So then scraped in the nearby buildings again. Scraped in a few posts and things and random details. Could have been a bit more careful with the with the figures. They look a, a little bit messy. I mean, something I've started doing recently. Just a few rigger marks here and there, just for sort of, just to add interest and give the viewer something to think about. A few fence posts again, just gives it an excuse to cast a few more shadows to enhance the light, which today is coming from over this side man big shadows cast across there could be trees or buildings or something and the uh, bit of rigor work there with the telegraph poles you're putting very very simply but again just adds that little extra man-made element to keep the interest going so that's it for, so that's it for today I hope you enjoy that thanks as always for watching for your support um, Especially all the patrons, if you do get a chance to join me over at patreon.com slash Stephen Cronin, it'd be very much appreciated. So until next time, if you've got any questions, please ask. Keep practicing and I'll see you again soon.